time I saw her was at the Naval Air Station in Alameda, California on a morning in February 1945. You'd have never known to look at her that she was a battle-scarred veteran who had fought bravely in the Philippine Sea and had practically been destroyed. When I thought of what this carrier had been through, how she'd fought with flying colors, I was proud to be assigned to her. I'd heard a lot about her captain, too. I was very anxious to meet him, maybe a little nervous even, because he was supposed to be as tough as the ship. He was reputed to be one of the toughest men in the Navy to serve under. Whether he was a fair man, too, or just tough, time would tell. In a little while now, I'd meet him. Lieutenant Commander McIntyre reporting aboard. Of course, Father McIntyre. Welcome aboard, Lieutenant Hanson. I'm glad to be here, Lieutenant. We didn't expect you until Pearl. I couldn't wait. I caught a ride on a plane. Father McIntyre, I'm John Moody, Protestant chaplain aboard. Well, I'm glad to know you, John. Good to know you, too, Father. You should have a lot to talk about. Being we're in the same business, huh? Chaplain, would you show the Father his stateroom? Uh, zero, one, two, eight. Be glad to. Come this way, Father. Surely. Hope you find your stateroom comfortable, Father. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Have you ever been aboard a carrier before, Father? No, never. I want to know this one from stem to stern. I want to know all of her people. Well, that'll take a lot of knowing. We have over 3,200 men aboard this ship. Well, that should be enough for both of us. Uh, many Protestants? Quite a few. How is your turnout? Oh, it could be better. Well, maybe I can be of some help. What? Oh, I promise not to steal any of your customers. Padre! Remember me? Pete Kelly! Wow! The last time I saw you was in a hospital bed in Pensacola. He ditched his training plane, nearly drowned himself. That was a close call. Close enough. I remember a pretty girl who used to visit you in the hospital. Mary, uh... What was her name? Mary Carney. Oh, yes, of course. And uh, what became of Mary Carney? She's uh, Mrs. Pete Kelly now, Father. Oh, good for you, boy. Good for you. Any little Kellys? Not yet, but soon, I hope. Soon, I hope. Well, this will be your first experience at combat duty, eh, Pete? That's right, Father. We had our final training at Santa Rosa. All right, you swamp chuckies, get the lead out and get back to your working parties on the double. Why this ship has got to be polluted with a mess of skinheads like you guys is more than I can figure out. But I'm stuck with you and I've got to make the best of it. And I don't want no belly aching either. That gear ain't stowed by the time dinner is piped down, we'll work around the clock. If any of you guys don't like the way you're getting treated, tell your troubles to Chaplain Moody. Right? Right. Buck, our new chaplain, Father McIntyre, our chief boatswain, Buck Fitzpatrick. Well, we're proud to have you aboard, Father. How are you, Buck? All right, boys, get back to your working parties before I lose my temper. <laughs> Not that I ever do. Buck, the chaplain said he'd like to see the ship, and you know her better than we do. Oh, you just leave him to me, sir. You'll be in good hands. Buck's been with her ever since she was launched. I'll take your bags and your orders back to your stateroom if you'd oh, like. Oh, that's very good of you, John. Thank you very much. Father. See you, Pete. Been in the Navy long, Father? Oh, about a year, but never served on a carrier before. This is a lot of ship. About 30,000 tons. <laughs> a good leader, Eddie Everett. Used to be a radio headliner. You've probably heard of him. Yeah, I think I have. All right, Eddie, pick up the tempo. Let's have a little beat in there. These are some of our bad boys being mustered, Father, the prisoners at large and restricted men. For their sins, huh? Oh, nothing serious, just fighting, coming aboard, crocked, you know, the usual. But you take that one guy at the end, Chris Jordan, that's a case for you. Tough guy? 
just in trouble all the time. Nothing serious, just, uh, just stubborn. Maybe he needs a little help from my department. Well, I don't know, Father. Maybe he doesn't want to go to heaven. Hey, mate, got a lot of rain and shit in there. Let's go. Look, you want to go ashore tonight? Might be our last chance. Are you nuts? Look, I got a spot where we can have a real ball. I've got it all doped out. When the guys break for dinner, we hide out. When it gets dark, we come back, we slip out, we go ashore. No, sir, I'll have no part of it. When they ask you about me, what are you going to say? My name, rate, and serial number. Very clever. Well, there it is. This is what most people have in mind when they speak of a flat top. The flight deck for the planes landing and taking off. What they don't know is that the main part of a carrier is down below. That's where her heart is. Our ship is as long as three football fields if you stretch them out end to end. And below decks, we've got everything you'd find in the average American town. And we also have the best barber shop in the Navy. You with the new air group? Yeah, I'm turret gunner on Ensign Pete Kelly's plane. My name's Halsey, William. Come again? William Halsey. Yeah. Okay, Admiral. Address and nearest to Kent. What do you want that for? Nothing's gonna happen to me. I hope. Oh, yes, there is. After the war. Look, son, do you realize hundreds and thousands of kids have come west to fight this war? Kids who've never been away from home before. And what do you think gives them the biggest kick? California. And when the war's over and them same lonesome kids come back, what do you think they'll be heading? California. What do you think they'll be looking for? Dame. Right. What does that lead to? Marriage. What happens as a direct result? Babies. That's what can happen to you, Admiral. No kidding. If you pray your cards right. Hey, give me some of that fufu, will you? See, kid, in my business, I sort of got nature working for me. I'm in real estate. I'll put a roof over your head. Where do you think you're gonna want it? Where else but in California? Say, you must be from California. Hey, this kid's pretty smart. This is your new chaplain, boys, Father McIntyre. Howdy. Hi, Father. Oh, no, carry on, fellas. The best way for us to get acquainted is at services. Well, Father, that's about the end of the 50 cent tour. You want to go further? Yeah, let's keep going, as long as my legs hold out. I'll see you in church. So long, Father. So long, boys. Where was I? California. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, kid, my old man's got a 60-acre orange grove right in the heart of San Fernando Valley. When I get back, I'm gonna rip up them trees, and I'm gonna build homes for vets. When them guys come pouring off them ships into the arms of their ever-loving babes, the little loveness are gonna be ready and waiting for them. Four bedrooms, two heads, no money down, move right in. Now we're in the after engine room, Father. This is well below the waterline. This is one of the four engines that'll drive the ship through the water at almost 40 miles an hour. Big, huh? Oh. Commander? Good afternoon, Buck. Like to have you meet our new chaplain, Father McIntyre, Commander Glassie. Glad to know you, Father. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Well, that's about the end of the tour. Uh, has the Father seen steering aft yet, boats? No, sir. Of course, you wouldn't want to see that. That's a way, way aft. You gotta go way down. Ooh. Yes, I'd like to. If you're not too tired. Oh, no, I'm feeling fine. I was thinking that maybe you might be getting a little... Uh, no, no, no. Steering aft. Thank you, Commander. Steering aft, he wants to see. There's nothing back there he's got to see. More stairs to climb. After you, Father. Go ahead. <laughs>
Well, this is it, Father. Staring at. Very interesting. Well, this is your new chaplain, boys. He wants to see what goes on down here. We heard you were aboard, Father. I'm Marty Brennan. Marty, how are you? This is Archie Golder. Hello, Archie. Tom Short. Tom? Well, so this is where the ship can be steered by hand, huh? Yes, sir, in case the main controls in the pilot house are damaged or shot away. How is it done? Well, in an emergency, we unplex the steering engine. We use this hand crank. We get our directions from the pilot house over the sound power phone. It takes 70 turns of this crank to turn the rudder one degree. And uh, this is your battle station? Yes, Father. This is our battle station. Well, thanks, boys. Hey, Bonson. Uh, Chris Jordan is still playing tricks, man. Yeah, what are you doing now? He's out hiding somewhere on his ship, and I got search parties out looking for him. You see, what did I tell you, Father? Oh, that guy. So long, Father. Come on, Come on fellas. Come on, Father. Bye, sir. So long, boys. You make it, Father? Yes, Bradley. Coming up. had something better to do ashore. No telling what this guy might do, sir. Let's go, What's Jordan. That? What's the matter, Jordan? Well, he was due for a promotion to chief boatswain's mate, and he didn't get it. He blames everybody but himself. I'd like to have a talk with him, Buck. Go ahead, Father, but I'm afraid you're wasting your time. I'll wait for you on the hangar deck. Father McIntyre, the new chaplain. I'd like to speak to this man alone. All right, sir. Howdy. Hello, sir. Sit down. Well, first, you can forgive my curiosity, and then you can tell me what's wrong with you. Physically or spiritually? Mentally. I'm 100% sound, and I got a brain like a steel trap. And you're stuck with it. I can understand your disappointment when you weren't promoted. Who told you about that? Buck. Bless his dear little heart. But I can't understand the fuss you make about it. Got a raw deal. They promoted a guy with half my experience. I've got more sense than a lot of those dopes wearing chief's hats. I'm a high school graduate. Oh, a high school man. But, uh, by your behavior, you're proving they were right. I got a sneaking idea they were wrong. Wouldn't be trying to sell me a bill of goods, would you, Father? Like religion, for instance? Well, religion is my job. Sooner or later, I get around to it. But right now, all I'm trying to do is straighten out a fellow who's headed the wrong way. Your hatred doesn't hurt anybody but yourself. I don't hate anybody, Father. I like everybody on this ship, especially dear old Buck. I just want to get as far away from them as possible, that's all. You requested a transfer? Naturally, but they ignore it. And I don't like being ignored. So I get in their hair and one day they'll get tired of looking at me and kiss me goodbye. Anything else? Nope, guess not. But you're here for me again. Thank you, sir. If you were a betting man, Father, I'd lay you ten to one you didn't get the first base. No, I didn't. But I'll be up at bat again. And if I were a betting man, I'd be inclined to take your bet. Father McIntyre! Been looking all over for you. Heard you were aboard. I'm Commander Matthews. Well, how do you do, Commander? Our executive officer, Father. He's been with the ship ever since she was commissioned. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you, Commander. Commander Matthews, report. 
Come along, Father, and meet the captain. Oh, I'll be glad to. Well, Buck, thanks for everything. Okay, Father. Be seeing you. More coffee, Father? Yes, thanks. Just a drop. That's enough. That's enough. Thank you. Well, I've heard some great things about your ship, Captain. You got a lot of battle stars. I wasn't with her when she got them. They gave her to me after she was hit by a Jap suicide plane, and I brought her back for repairs. She's my first big command. He forgot to tell you, Father. The captain took a demotion in order to take over command of this ship. Well, that demotion wasn't much of a sacrifice. I was a fighter pilot for years, flew off the old Langley. I always wanted to command a carrier. I've done just about everything in this Navy, even swab decks. You see, Father, I started as an enlisted man. I'm what they call a Mustang. And the fact that I began at the bottom has always been a kind of a challenge. Yes, I can understand that. That's my wife and daughter, Leslie. Leslie's 16. She graduates from high school this year. I hope I'll be there to see it. She looks more like my wife than she does like me. I'd like to be a break for Leslie. <laughs> it is. We'll be the flagship of a task group dedicated to a difficult, dangerous mission. We've got a great crew. But during the session in dry dock, with so much leave, the usual thing happened. They slacked off. The men have been getting a little out of hand, Captain. Well, now it's time to take in the slack. Father, it's great to have you aboard. It's great to be aboard. Attention all hands. Attention all hands. This is an order from the captain. A message has just been received which orders our ship to sail tomorrow instead of the day after. For this reason, he regrets to announce that all leave and liberty must be canceled, effective immediately. That is all. Ain't the skipper got no place to go? Wait till my old lady hears about this. Fix up a standard. They ought to call this ship the Alcatraz. All right, you guys, cut the chatter. You know we never get liberty the last night in port. Leave your quarters. Now the smoking lamp is out throughout the ship while taking aboard aviation gasoline and fuel oil. Oh, hello, Mr. Kelly. I didn't know you were standing there in the dark. Hi, Admiral. Sit down. I've never been so low in all my life. I wired Dad and Mom telling them I'd talk to them on long distance tonight. Then I had to go send another wire calling it off on account of no liberty. My dad's a great old guy, but he's been very sick lately. It's tough, Admiral. I'll bet you were glad to see your wife when she came in yesterday. Yeah, I met her at the airport. I thought we were going to be together tonight. Today's her birthday, but we couldn't make it. I said goodbye to her on the phone. She had some news she was saving for me. We're gonna have a baby. Oh, that's tough. Hmm? Oh, I don't mean about the baby. That's swell, but... Well, I mean not being with her when she told you. That's terrible. Now look, Mr. Kelly, it's all gonna be okay. They'll be waiting for you on the dock when you get back in. You just keep your chin up, huh? Huh, that's it. Just think. A baby. And I'm your turret gunner. Oh, golly, am I proud. <laughs> Tell me, how can they do this to me? I promised to meet this doll tonight. Don't worry, somebody will meet her. That's what I'm afraid of. Let me ask you something. What are we fighting this stinking war for? For life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So now comes the skipper and says we ain't got no liberty. We ain't got no right to pursue nothing. Now look, I don't mind fighting and bleeding. When did you ever bleed, Squawk? Don't my nose bleed every time them five inches go off? That's your psychological reaction to gunfire. What's your language, fella? Every time it goes off, it scares the pants off you. You should crack about being scared. Why'd you want to go ashore the other night? I had a date. You mean you were trying to ditch a date, the same date we all got in the battle area? I've been on this bucket ever since she made her first strike, and I should have got my liberty tonight. All you gotta do is tell the captain there's no problem. Just tell the captain. I'd like to tell the captain... <laughs> <laughs> Shh! 
If they find out you snuck Meyer aboard the ship, they'll throw you both overboard. Don't worry about Meyer. He knows Rang. You let a guy with stripes on his arms come in and... Bump, right under the bunk goes Meyer. Say, I keep hearing about this guy, Buck. Buck will do this and Buck will do that. Who's Buck? Buck's the chief Paulson. You'll know him when you hear him. Never speaks above a whisper. Carry on, you guys! Carry on! This is just a social visit. I'm making it around to see that everything's buttoned up. Everybody present and accounted for? Yeah, we got our full count, Warden. You must have done time someplace, huh, Jordan? I'm doing my time now. Hey, how come these guys don't have liberty tonight? What difference does it make to you? You wouldn't have gotten one anyway. Oh, I'm not thinking of myself. I'm only thinking of my shipmates, my buddies. Who do you think you're kidding? You don't give a hoot about anybody but yourself. Look, I'm getting sore about this, and when we dock back at Pearl, I'm going to go to the captain and demand a transfer. Well, if you do, I'll okay it. I'll recommend that you get transferred to the waves. Can't you see he's just stringing you? This last night belongs to the ship. She's your dame now. You're married to her. And she don't want any of you guys cheating on her. You may be married to her, but I got big news for you. I'm getting a divorce. Look, Jordan. There's one thing you gotta learn. There's only three things important to a sailor. His wife, his kids, and his ship. So you imitate dogs, huh? Yes, sir. You imitate any other animals? N no, sir. Just dogs. Well, go ahead. Do a dog. Imitation of a dog with a can tied to its tail. Ah, uh, he's also a ventriloquist. Oh. Yes, sir. Imitation of a dog on the flight deck. Okay, kids, save it. Save it. Golder. When you asked for permission to bring a dog on this ship, I said, no, no mascots. Where is he? Come on, Maya. Come on. Please don't make me give him up, sir. You know the regulations. If we'd have had to leave, I was going to take him ashore and find a home for him. It's no use, Golder. If I let you guys have your own way, you'd make a floating zoo out of this ship. I gotta have discipline. All right, Pooch, you beat it. You don't belong on this ship. I don't like those kids trying to pull the wool over these old Navy eyes, huh? Tried to bring the pooch aboard, huh, Boats? Tried to. He did. The kid had it in his bunk. I heard the dog barking when I walked over. One of his buddies tried to make believe he was a ventriloquist. Is that an old one or is that an old one? <laughs> it's got a beard, Boat. A beard? It's got whiskers. <laughs> Good night, Lieutenant. Good night, Boats. My. On the morning of February 7th, 1945, the ship was ready to leave from the anchorage at Alameda. As we headed for the Golden Gate, the shores of our homeland seemed more beautiful than ever. The desire to keep them so clearly etched that picture in my memory. On the way to Pearl Harbor, intensive training was the order of the day. There was a big job ahead of us, and everyone had to be ready. Torpedo defense! Torpedo defense! General quarters! General quarters! All hands, man your battle stations! All hands, man your gun stations!
torpedo attack. Nine Bettys coming in from dead ahead. Distance 20,000 yards. All 40 millimeter mounts ready. All five inch mounts ready. All guns ready to commence firing. Combat Information Center ready. Distance, 10,000 yards. Commence firing. Commence firing. condition yoke is set throughout the ship. Main control reports all boilers on the line for full power. Cease firing. Cease firing. Three minutes to commence firing, six minutes for damage control to secure watertight integrity. My bad on gun stations. Yeah, but six minutes is too long for damage control to button up the ship. If we're not secure below decks, we go down like a ton of bricks. Continue the drills, particularly damage control. Simulate everything that may come up in the combat zone. Aye, aye, Captain. Keep him out of Joe. When we go into battle, every man aboard this ship should do his job automatically. I don't want one man to die or cause the death of anyone else for lack of training. That's all, Joe. Thanks. Yes, sir. Some of you guys seem to think we won a war in the first round. But that ain't the case. We got a long way to go before the final bell, and it's going to get tougher every minute. You guys get all thoughts of the beach, dames, and liberty out of your mind for keeps. There just ain't no such thing where we're going, and thinking about them only files up the work that's cut out for us. And another thing, on the way to Pearl, we're going to drill around the clock, and you go to these drills on the double. From now on, on the double means you've got to move faster than sound. seconds. That's still not good enough. Men have had a tough day, Captain. They're all fagged out. Under battle conditions, they may not see their bunks for 72 hours at a time. One more drill for damage control and then we'll secure. Damage control will be our salvation if a kamikaze ever gets through our combat air patrol or any aircraft barrage. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> single-handed Give me that. and Here. saved your ship from <laughs> holding your ever-loving plum cake white guy. your ass. All right, white guy. <laughs> All right, Jordan. Come on, Jordan. What's coming off here? Squawk, I told you. You know, when you throw a left, you got to keep your guard up. Otherwise, you're wide open for a right. You know, I've told you this. All right, knock it off. You're both on report for fighting. Fighting? Me fight with my old pal, Squawk? 
We're playmates. I was just giving him a couple of lessons in the manly art of self-defense. You don't believe me? Ask anybody. Ask Father Joe. Yeah, I think it was a sparring match. Okay, Father. But you guys watch it. We've got enough trouble on the ship the way it is. May I be forgiven for that white lie? Maybe you boys are a little overtrained. A little overtrained? Are you kidding, Father? This is the first night we've had without a drill. Well, you better make the most of it. Get yourself a good night's rest. So long, Father. Thanks, Father. Good night, good night fellas. Father. Good night, Father. Hey, good night, Father. Right. Nice. 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 See you later. Fighters up. We're respotting the deck. We'll need more room to take them aboard when they come back. This is the last one, kids! I'm glad that's over. I'm dying on my feet. Now there's an idea. Bill all day long and get called out of your bunks in the middle of the night. Don't you quit your beefing, Jordan. Captain? Fred? The flight deck has been respotted. Due to the number of planes we got on the flight deck, we're unable to get that last barrier up. Request permission to let the flight deck crew go below until half an hour before the night fighters land aboard. If I bring aircraft aboard with that last barrier down, it's too big a risk. You can't get the barrier up because your spot's too loose. Respot the deck. Aye, aye, sir. Respot the flight deck. Is this guy kidding? How much does he think we can take? Okay, boys, you heard what the captain said. We gotta respot the flight deck. Get moving. On a double, boys. Come on. Get going. I've seen some tough skippers in my life, but this guy's the champ. Move that front line forward so we can close up what's in back of it. The only thing we have to respot, buddy, is the guy up on the bridge. Come back here, Jordan. What are we going to do, sweetheart? Oh, it's a little... Come on over here. I want to talk to you. You know better than to sound off like that. The captain knows what he's doing, and he's right. He's your tin god. You should have married him. I ought to kick you over the side. And I would, too, if it wasn't against regulations. You can get rid of me, big shot. Use your influence. Get me a transfer. Stop acting like a juvenile. Get some sense in your head. Maybe you're right. I, I guess I've been acting like a first-class chump. Third class. All right, I'll play it your way. You mean that? Maybe that'll get me a transfer. Get below. Austin Fitzpatrick reports to the captain on the bridge. Captain? What happened down there, Buck? Nothing, sir. I just sent one of the men below, that's all. A little trouble? I wouldn't say that, sir. Buck, you know this crew better than anybody. What's going on below decks? Well, if you must know, Captain, the men are a little steamed up on account of these extra drills. Aren't we all? You see, Father, when this ship took a bomb hit in the Philippine Sea, the Japs reported her sunk. I still believe that. When they find out she's alive, they'll make every effort to send her to the bottom. And that's why I want this crew on the ball. I want to bring them home, I want to bring this ship home. I understand, Captain. 
Good night, Buck. Good night, Captain. Oh, oh, by the way, Captain, one thing I would like to know. I heard a crack below that you were about as tough as this Captain Bly. Captain Bly? Yeah, it seems that he's a CO who had a mutiny on his hands. Do we have a ship in our Navy called the Bounty? Captain Bly is a character in fiction. Oh? Oh. Good night, Captain. Hey, Father. Oh, hello, Chris. Ah, this is one time I'm really glad to see you. Oh? Well, what brought this about? Well, I'll be leaving the ship right after Pearl, and now's as good a time as any to say goodbye. Oh, you mean your transfer came through? Not yet, but it will. What makes you so sure? Confidentially, I took a poke at Buck. Oh, so that's what you did. You took a poke at him, huh? He's probably up reporting me right now to the old man. They may give me the works, but at least I'll get a transfer off this ship. Well, it's been nice knowing you, Father. Chris, you and I are going to see a lot of each other. Not after Pearl. Oh, yes, after Pearl. After Pearl? Mm-hmm. Because, you see, I was there when Buck reported to the captain. And he didn't say a word about you taking a poke at him. You don't realize what a good friend of yours Buck is. A friend of mine? You must be crazy, Father. Well, he proved he has your interest at heart. You should learn to appreciate him. Well, so long, Chris. Life is full of surprises, huh? Dirty double-crosser. There was more to prepare for than battle stations. And on the day after we left Pearl Harbor, our planes were having target practice and learning to land safely on the ship while it was in motion. And when this was over... Mr. Jensby? Yes, sir. Tell the captain that last division of torpedo planes is down to 40 gallons of gas. We'll expedite getting them aboard. Aye, aye, sir. ditch again. Brace yourself, Admiral. We're landing. Tell the air officer to have the pilot of that plane report to the bridge. Aye, aye, sir. The captain wants the pilot of 5 Terror 18 to report to the bridge, sir. Very well. I got it coming to me. Ensign Kelly, Captain, Torpedo Squadron 5. Did you recognize the wave-off signal the LSO gave you? I was almost out of gas, sir. And afraid to ditch? No, sir. But the plane... Only a miracle kept you from crashing into those other planes, killing a number of people, including you and your crew. Think of that? Yes, sir. Gasoline systems open for refueling. A fire could spread to other parts of the ship. A wave-off from the LSO is mandatory. It must be obeyed. But, Captain, if you... Your attention, Mr. Kelly. If you go wrong on a simple training problem like this, what are you going to do in a real fight? You won't have any time to think, then. Your reactions will have to be instinctive. If they're not, you'll get yourself killed, and you'll kill a lot of other people we can't afford to lose. 
Many of the men aboard this ship were with her in her worst hours of trial. They faced death many times to keep her afloat. And I'm not going to let any second guesser follow them up. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Mr. Kelly, you're relieved of any further duties involving flying. That's all. Yes, sir. It was the morning of March 13th. And we were approaching our rendezvous with Task Force 58 at the anchorage at Ulithi. Task Force 58, Joe. Isn't that something to look at? Yes, sir. As the intrepid Enterprise, the Hancock. I see the Pittsburgh, the Santa Fe. There's our escort, the Guam. She's just dropping her hook. You think we'll get liberty tonight? Liberty? What would you do with it? Well, this is a South Sea island. There must be dames on it. Dames? Not now. They got rid of all the broads. Are you kidding? Who done that? Mm, some wise guy in Washington. Oh. Hey, Pops. Yeah? How many ships you figured there are? I don't know. Must be a thousand. A thousand? Man, I'll bet there are a lot of prospective customers for my housing project on them ships. show up in person on or before the 15th and explain why I didn't report for jury duty, I'm in contempt of court. Well, tomorrow's the 15th. Yeah, that's right. I can't make it. <laughs> I've seen you do that a half a dozen times, Buck. How come you don't open them? These are from my dead past. Huh? A doll? A Jezebel. I married her. So? She sued me for divorce. Named the Navy his correspondent. She claimed I loved the Navy more than I did her. How about that? <laughs> she got it? Nah, the judge said love of the Navy was no infidelity and threw the case out of court. I haven't seen her in over two years now. She gets part of my pay. She keeps writing to me. When I'm done, I'm done. Here. Take him back. Take him back. Take him back. Uh, I'm sorry, Father. Father. How do you pronounce that? Ah, uh, Scurithrips citri. That's a citrus disease. Very destructive. Oh, is that right? That's wonderful news. That's what my old man's trees have got. The whole 60 acres. My dream's coming true. Oh, the homes for vets? Yeah. Can't fail, Father. California climate's perfect for it. What a picture. 60 acres of diapers blowing in the breeze. Sent you went away, sweetheart. I haven't gone anywhere, not even to dances. But your best friend, Louie, is home on furlough, and, and he's sorry for me, and comes to see me every night. Hey, Chris. Yeah? Here's a letter. I got it mixed up with one mine. Hey, thanks, Chuck. Excuse me, Father. No, 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 don't marry me. My wife. Oh, yeah. oh, isn't that great, Father? It's going to be twins. How do you know? Well, the doctor says so. He practically guarantees it. Congratulations. <laughs> I think so often about you, Dad, wondering where you are, praying that you're safe. Please try to be home when I graduate in June. Love, Leslie. She's still a kid, still puts a row of X's across the bottom of every letter. Yeah, it's been a long cruise, hasn't it?
Listen, everybody. I just got such wonderful news, I've got to share it with somebody or bust. What is it, Father Joe? I told you my sister was a nun in Manila. She was captured by the Japanese in 42, and that's the last we heard of her. But she's been found. She's alive and well and back on the job. That's wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? Steve, you lived in Manila. You must have heard of the Marion All Order that my sister belonged to. I did, Father. What's the matter, son? My mother and brother escaped from Manila. They were working with a native underground. My mother was captured. This letter from my brother says that she was executed as a spy. On the 14th, we were at sea again, at general quarters, when word was passed that the captain was about to speak to all hands. This is the captain. Now that we've left Ulithi, I can tell you that we're about to become part of a task group whose mission is to destroy air and naval installations on the Japanese home islands. When the Japs see this carrier, they'll think she's a ghost ship. They believe she's at the bottom of the sea. They'll soon find out how wrong they are. And when they do, they're going to give us everything they've got in the way of suicide planes and submarine attacks. The mission in which we'll be engaged is most important. We must all be alert for any emergency and do everything in our power to protect this ship. I have full confidence in you. I'm proud of you. That's all. Hi, Admiral. I understand your pilot won't be flying anymore. Don't worry about Mr. Kelly. When the first mission comes up, he'll be flying it, and I'll be with him. Wolokowski, the captain's orderly, tells me he doesn't stand a chance. Wolokowski, what does he know? He's got big ears. He knows what goes on up there. Well, then he shouldn't blab about it. Mr. Kelly passed up a wave off. That's serious. Well, lots of pilots got grounded at Pensacola, but they're back flying again. This isn't Pensacola. Kelly's case comes up before the trouble board tonight. Why, Stuff? You should be glad of it. You'll fly with some guy that'll bring you back in one piece. I'm gonna go talk to the captain. You're gonna what? I'm gonna go see him. No enlisted man can get to the captain without permission. You couldn't even get past Wolokowski. Well, well, I don't see why not. Lots of guys got to talk to Lincoln during the Civil War. I'm gonna try it. Hey. Hey. Lincoln, see what he gets for reading books? Where do you think you're going? Is the captain on the bridge? Yeah, so what? I gotta talk to him. You gotta what? Talk to the captain. About what? It's personal. Get lost. Get lost or I'll throw you in the booby hatch. Look, I gotta talk to the captain. It's important. What's the trouble, Wolokowski? It's an enlisted man, captain. I think he's nuts. I am not. Send him in here. Aye, aye, sir. Wilson. Halsey, Captain. WB. Turret gunner with Air Group 5. That is. You say Halsey? Yes, Captain. William Halsey. Did they call you Admiral? Bull? Yes, sir. Well, son, what's on your mind? Speak up. Well, sir, I... <clears throat> I guess I shouldn't have come up here. Must be important or you wouldn't be here. Here. Relax. Sit down. There? Cigarette? No, thank you, Captain. I don't smoke. Mr. Kelly don't want me to. Mr. Kelly? Ensign Kelly. He don't know I'm here. He'll be sorry if he finds out. It's him I came to talk about. He's in a jam. What's on your mind? Well, I've been turret gunner on Pete's... Excuse me, on Mr. Kelly's plane ever since the group started forming in Santa Rosa. We get sort of close to our pilot, but with him depending on us and we depending on him. You see, Mr. Kelly's got a wife he's crazy about. Now family's on the way, and he's all upset. Well, I guess you'd be kind of upset if you were going to have twins. Well, a little. 
Well, he had to ditch a plane once at Pensacola and he nearly got drowned. He ain't scared of it, sir. But a guy with his responsibilities wouldn't be blamed for being sort of careful. He should have taken that wave off. But I'll bet even you might have pulled a crazy stunt like that when you were a young pilot. I might have. As far as Kelly's concerned, I can't tell you what my decision will be until I see the findings of the trouble board. Well, couldn't you pull your rank on the board, Captain? You think a captain ought to do that? Well, maybe not. Honest, I hate to keep plugging like this, but couldn't you give me just a little hope? Well, you know my decision will have to be based on what I think is best for the ship. But what you've told me about Mr. Kelly will make my decision easier. I hope I'll be able to restore him to flying duty. You mean that, sir? For real? For real. Oh, gee, Captain, you don't know what this means to me. Maybe I can do something for you someday. I'm sure you can. Yes, sir. I mean, aye, aye, sir. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Admiral. One of these days, they're gonna come and get you with a butterfly net. Get lost, get lost, or I'll throw you in a booby hatch. Why, you... Polakowski? Yes, sir. During the night, as we steamed deeper into enemy waters, our destroyer escort sighted the submarine. Dixon, this is Eagle. Over. Dixie, this is Eagle. Over. Eagle, this is Dixie. Over. I have a submarine contact dead ahead of me, sir. Bearing zero, zero, zero. Over. Roger out. Right standard rudder. Right standard rudder, sir. Squadron commander was briefing his pilots on the job waiting for them the following morning. Their main mission was to destroy any combatant ships in Kobe Harbor. And the happiest man among them was my young friend from Pensacola, Ensign Kelly, who had been reinstated. Tomorrow's the day we've been waiting for. And you guys will really have something to cut your teeth on. And while we're at it, let's give Tokyo Rose something to really talk about. The enemy expects us. And he'll throw everything at us, but... The Geisha girls. <laughs> okay. Aircraft assignments on the board. Let's go hit the pads. We're going to need all the rest we can get. During the night of the 18th, there was no rest for those whose battle stations were in combat information center. Unidentified aircraft appeared on the radar screen constantly. We were so close to Japan now, and our force was so large that we had been accurately spotted by the enemy. Any second, we could be blown to pieces. Hey, Squawk, I wonder what's going on up there. J-1 
Japs are looking for us, you can depend on that. As we steam nearer to our enemy's homeland, through dangerous waters with enemy planes searching for and making attacks on different units of our force, the night was one of continuous alarms. Not on their battle stations or on their way to the mess hall. All right, boys, keep the line moving. Get your challenge and get back topside in a hurry. We got work to do. All right, skinhead, get down the hatch. The boys are waiting for their coffee. Speaking of coffee, I can use a cup myself. Excuse me, mister. Go ahead, move. There were 40 planes on the flight deck and 35 on the hangar deck, all gassed and ready to go. And they were being launched and catapulted from the ship as fast as possible. Keep moving, boys. Step lively. Lively now. And you know what I like about sea duty? What? Nothing. How does it feel to be flying again, Pete? Great. I uh, heard some scuttlebutt about you going to see the captain. Who, me? I would dare go see the captain. I couldn't even get past Wolokowski. Hey, Patty. Yeah. Remember the little pancake I knew in San Francisco? Well, Buckwheat. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Oh, yeah. She was two-timing me. She already had a boyfriend, a Marine. No kidding. How'd you find out? The guy wrote me a letter about it. He was kind of indignant. Them Marines, they got no sense of you. Nah. <laughs> CBS message from Hancock, Captain. Hancock reports bogey 350 degrees relative. Distance 15 miles. Captain? Combat Information Center reports radar screen shows no sign of reported bogey.
raging out there. Try the other hatch door and see if it's cool down there. It's so hot I can't touch it! Get the men and ammunition out of those forward five inch mounts! Open the door, get the men out of the mount! Say a few words. Buck, why don't you pray? I am praying. I mean, out loud. Me? Yeah. I think it'll help the guys. All right, fellas. We need help, fellas. I mean is I, I guess it's up to God. And I ain't kidding when I say I sure hope he knows how we feel about this. I ain't much on this praying business. When you're scared, the first thing you do is start trying to square things. But all I'm asking is that maybe he'll figure that we've done the best we can and let's go at that. We didn't ask to get in this spot. So maybe he'll give us a break. Maybe he'll take a chance on us. Figuring that we'll all try to do better. I guess this is a funny kind of prayer to you guys, but it's what I'm thinking. And what I'm asking. Father, what about the kids in the mess hall? That's bad. They're trapped by fire on both sides. If you don't get to them in a hurry, they'll suffocate. The mess hall? That's easy. Hey, Jordan, where are you going? See you later, Father. Chris Jordan, in his previous efforts to hide out of the ship, 
had many times used the ventilator shaft that led to the mess hall. Now, for the first time, he wasn't using his quick thinking for selfish reasons. and don't crowd. Now follow me one at a time. When did you start giving orders? Buck. Okay, guys, you heard what he said? Don't crowd, keep in contact, and follow him one at a time. Let's go, kid. Let's go! Emergency crews worked all night to put out fires which kept breaking out one after another. There was no rest for anyone. CBS calling, Captain. It's from the flagship. Dixie, this is Olympic. Over. Olympic, this is Dixie. Over. How are you making out? We have everything under control if we can just keep these fires down. 
Thanks for the air cover, Admiral. Most of them are your own pilots flying from other carriers. We have two boilers lighted. By morning, we expect to proceed under our own power. Destroyers will run anti-sub patrols through the night and screen you tomorrow. Roger. We only keep them off our necks till morning. One more bomb or torpedo might send us to the bottom. The next day, our ship was barely afloat. The enemy bombs had wrecked havoc everywhere. And it was a question whether we'd be able to make it back to Ulithi or not. How are we doing, Captain? Not bad. We got the rest of the boilers lighted during the night. We're making 14 knots. Orderly, cup of coffee for the commander. Aye, aye, sir. The galley's in pretty bad shape. I managed to dig up some sandwiches. Can I get you some? No, thanks. Coffee's all I want. Never tasted better. Well, we're still afloat. Yeah. Pick up speed during the day and the Jap aircraft don't spot us. We ought to make you lithy by tomorrow morning. March 24th, by the grace of God, we limp back into the fleet anchorage at... By all the rules of the game, she should be at the bottom of the sea. Here the job of cleaning up began. We had a crippled ship, but after two tries, the enemy had still not been able to make a ghost ship out of it. What about the men who died here, Father? I wonder if they resent my being alive. If they feel somehow I let them down. I don't think so. How can I plead my case to a jury of dead men? There's no common language. They know, Captain. They know. I suppose when we get home, they'll have a band to meet us. No band will ever play loud enough for those poor kids that missed muster this morning. We were not out of danger yet, however. We still had to take the ship back to the Brooklyn Navy Yard, 12,000 miles away. The job seemed almost insurmountable. We had only 700 men out of the original 3,000 with whom to take the ship safely home. And there was the possibility every inch of the way of attack by plane or by submarine. Men now had more than home on their minds. They had prayers on their lips. On the way to Hawaii, we held a memorial service for those who had given their lives, our shipmates, our friends. After we had honored the dead, we decorated some of the living. Jordan, Olson's mate first class, front and center. Jordan, I've heard a lot about you the last few days. You're out of uniform. Take off that white hat. 
Try this one on for size. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you, sir. Hey, Chris. <laughs> That's a nice looking hat. Thanks, Buck. I still owe you one. When I get back on my feet, I'm going to pull it down over your ears. Oh, take it easy, Pop. Pop! <laughs> take me back to sick bay. I just had a relapse. <laughs> He's having one already. As we sighted Pearl Harbor, one thought was uppermost in our minds. 6,000 more miles to go. The possibility of enemy attack was still imminent. We were kept on the alert day and night. Home was only 1,500 miles and a few days away as we steamed through the Panama Canal. Every minute was bringing us closer and closer to our loved ones and our country. Slowly, our war-weary ship made its way up the Atlantic coast to New York Harbor. The five days seemed endless. The Statue of Liberty had never looked so young and beautiful as on that day. She stood for everything we'd fought for, everything we'd hoped for. And none of us would ever forget our captain, whose courage had proved worthy of the ship and worthy of our trust. What was left of our band would express better than words what was in all our hearts.